And so, if you look at what the MPP said, I'll be a bit fast. They claim that they inherited a weak economy. They said excess capacity, we are paying so much. They claim that we give them fewer challenges. And so I want to deal with some of these issues. But before then, when President Mahama took over, he did not engage in blame game. And I want you to get this right. What President Mahama and what a good leader does is that when the people of Ghana vote for you, your duty is not to go nagging. Your duty is not to go whining. Your duty is to focus on the problem and deal with the challenge. And so what President Mahama sought to do was one, deal with the generation capacity, deal with the fuel challenge, deal with the financial challenge, whilst dealing with these challenges, increase access to electricity, and then you scale up renewable energy, but more importantly, pursue reforms within that sector so that the gains you make are not eroded. These are the thematic areas President Mahama sought to undertake. But I quickly want to deal with some misnomer. The MPP have always said they have excess capacity. And so we shouldn't have them, so it's financial. In 2007, and this is from the Energy Commission, we had an installed capacity of 1,985 megawatts. Our peak demand was 1,274 megawatts. It means that we had an excess capacity of 711 megawatts. And yet, we had doomed so for one year under the MPP in 2007. I am putting this across for you to understand that having excess capacity alone is not enough. For instance, if you have hydropower and your capacity is about 1,400 and the elevation is very low, no amount of money can raise the water. You can only achieve about 30%. And so what President Mahama did was to deal with the generation capacity. And these are some of the plans President Mahama pursued. President Mahama brought in Ameri, he brought in Car Power, he brought in AXA, he brought in KTPP, he brought in Trojan, he brought in VX Solar Energy, and these are the plans. These are GE Frame 9 state-of-the-art plants. Most of them, all the plants President Mahama brought, they are biofuel or dual fuel plants. It's a deliberate and calculated attempt so that when you don't have light crude oil, you can switch to gas. Some of them, when you don't have gas, you can switch to diesel fuel. If you have diesel fuel, you can switch to heavy fuel oil. It gives you that flexibility in order to deal with the challenge head on. Let's go on. And so you see a Mary there. You see the solar power. You see car power. You see AXA there. You see President Mahama commissioning the Asogle power plant when it was completed. And this is Victoria. Let's go on. So in 2017, despite all the complaints, this is what Ken Oforiata had to say about you, President Mahama. A total of 880 megawatts of power capacity was added to the country's installed generation capacity as at year end 2016 to bring the installation capacity from 1,900 to 4,132 megawatts. Let's go on. So you more than doubled the capacity. Then you sought to also deal with the fuel challenge. Because when you have the generation plants, you must power them with fuel. Fuel was a major, major issue for us. So under your administration, what you did was to put in place the Atuabo gas processing plant. Then through your instrumentality, you gave us three FPSOs. FPSO Kwame Nkrumah, FPSO Atamils, and FPSO John Ejekum Kufo under your administration. And these are the FPSOs. Everything I talk about, I want to pictorial evidence so you see what we are talking about. Today, because of the gas infrastructure that you brought, we have guaranteed gas supplies to our power plants. We have reduced light crude oil importation. We are saving so much money through import substitution. We are having improved generation capacity and efficiency because we are using gas. And when you do that and you save money, you are stabilizing your local currency. When you have indigenous gas, you are boosting your local economy and supplying to industries. And then today, because of the gas infrastructure, LPG gas that we used to import, today we generate and produce more than half of the LPG that this country consumes because of this. So in 2016, we imported 456.9 kilotons of light crude oil. 
because of the gas infrastructure, in 2017, it reduced to 178 and meaning that we had reduced light crude imports by 61%. When you reduce light crude by 61% and subsidy with gas, and you do the calculation, you are making a saving of $300 million per annum because of what you've done. Let's go. Then, President Mama said, look, I'm dealing with generation, I'm dealing with fuel, but let me tackle the financial challenges head on. And when we talk of legacy debt, we are talking of debt that transcends from 1992 till the time President Mama decided, look, enough of this, let's deal with it head on. So he instituted what you call the energy sector levy. In 2016, we got 3.5 billion. 2017, we got 3.2 billion. President Mama also said that, look, let's institute or install a lot of solar prepayment meters. So he gave a cash amount of 80 million for us to buy prepayment meters for ECG, so that you put them at the various institutions to reduce the leakage. Then he initiated what you call the cash waterfall to ensure that when you receive revenues, there's a fair way of distributing the revenues to the utilities. And so let me tell you what happened. I heard President Akufuado indicate that President Mahama did nothing. He only inherited liabilities. This is SF report of the energy sector levy for the year 2016. This was presented by Ken Oforiata, not me. And you can check paragraph 39, paragraph 32, page 17 of the report. This is what he said. And as I said, paragraph 32, page 13. For the period under review, 787 million was utilized for the payment of power utility debts. So in 2016 alone, President Mahama paid almost 800 million Ghana cities of the legacy debt when he decided that he would deal with the debt head on. Then, as if that is not enough, they've always told us that, look, it's all liability, liability. This is what Ken Oforata says. And it's in paragraph 36. In summary, total lodgements into the established accounts amounted to 1.6 billion against total utilization of 1.4 billion. This means that when you were leaving office as president, you left a cash amount sitting in that account, 234 million, bequeathed to Akufado as an asset. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go on. Then you see 189 million was used to help Tor. So that Tor will buy fuel when the prices are very low. When the prices go up, Tor bust. Bust will then release the fuel. So boss kept keeping strategic stock. They watch the market. When pri fuel prices come low, they buy. When it goes high, then they release it. That is why in 2016, you didn't see the level of increment in terms of petroleum price. Because we planned it, we managed it, and we executed it. Today, I am telling Ghanaians, and I'm challenging the minister to deny that, that boss has no strategic stock in their tanks. If we face any challenge today, this country will go down because we don't have the required 8 to 12 weeks of strategic stock in their tanks. We used to do that. This is the true state of the energy sector, as I said. President Mama, these are some of your achievements. I've elaborated on them. Because of time, let me move on. And then I talked about the access to electricity. They are always complaining that there's excess capacity. Excess capacity. We knew what we were doing. Because we knew we were bringing in additional capacity, President Obama thought that we should scale up on access. So that as generation is coming, you increase the access rate, and then they consume the power. So when we took over, access rate was 54%. By the time we left office, we had increased it from 54 to 83.24%. It means that on the average, we're increasing electricity every year by 4%. Let's go. And this is confirmed by the minister in his statement, in the budget statement. Please, let's roll over. Now, I'll just talk about the previous slide. Because of the works you did, Ghana today exports 2.8 billion worth of crude oil, whilst importing 1.7 billion worth of crude oil. When you the net of it means that Ghana is a net positive exporter of more than $1 billion of oil because of the work you did. 
We talked about the receipts from petroleum resources. This is a graph just to let you know what happened. In 2016, President Mama got 900 million cities from petroleum resources total. 2017, Akufuado got 2.3 billion, more than double what President Mama got. As at September 2018, he had gotten 2.7 billion. So the question is that, having received more than double what President Mama has done, can Akufuado show as one, one project, just one project that he has also been able to achieve over the past two years compared to President Mahama? And these are some of the other achievements. You pass the Petroleum Revenue Management Act, you pass the Exploration Act, you pass the local content legislation, you pass the Gas Master Plan, you pass the Petroleum Commission Act, all to ensure that there's transparency, there's accountability, so that the system can respond to the needs and aspirations of the country. Now let's go to the achievements of Akufuado. And that's why I said I want to handle Akufuado a bit in terms of uh, what he's been able to achieve. The first thing the Akufuado administration did was to declare 5 million liters of fuel as contaminated fuel and sold it at knockdown prices to Movempina. That was the first achievement. Then I told you that we increased electricity from 54 to 83. For the past two years, if you go and read the 2019 budget, President Akufuado, despite having inherited the Hunan project and the China water project from President Mahama, they've increased access from 83 to 84%. So whilst we are doing 4% per annum, President Akufuado is doing 0.5% per annum. And then you turn around and come and complain that there's excess capacity. There's excess capacity. Because you are not investing in the sector. If you had invested in the sector, you won't have the amount of excess capacity you are witnessing. He has increased fuel price by 30%. And worst of all, instead of using the Esla levies, uh, you and I, we have witnessed the high level of premise diversion as far as the premise secretariat is concerned. Then the Esla levies, they are completely mismanaging it. The minister borrowed 141 million of it for his budgetary support. Just when I checked, he had borrowed another 600 million to pay for pensions. And so the act or the levies that they resisted, the one that they said they were not part of and described President Mahama as a devil, they are keeping the levies, they are taking the revenues, they are not using it for indented purposes, but they are rather using it for other purposes. Let's go on. Because of the policies they are pursuing, and I want to walk you please, and the policies we pursued, this is ECG. In 2016, ECG made a profit of 725 million cities. 2017, under Akufuado, they made a loss of 521 million. 2018, they made a loss of 3 billion. 2019, they are projecting a loss of 6 billion. And so, in the past 1, 2, 3 years, they are projecting to make a loss of 9.521 billion. This is fresh debt, not legacy debt. Then the next one, if you take Gridco, during your time as president, Gridco made a profit of 69.1 million. 2017, they made a loss of 31 million. 2018, they made a loss of 118 million. 2019, they are projecting to make a loss of 345 million. Then the next one, I'm just trying to let you know what their policies has led us to. This is Buidam. Buidam sold power, 99 million. They received only $22 million. So they made a loss of $77 million. But the worst of them is the way they are managing the dam. This is what they plan to do in terms of drafting the dam. That is the water. This first quarter, they were doing well. Second quarter, they tried. Third quarter, they tried. Then fourth quarter, when we started experiencing doom so because they couldn't pay the IPPs, they quickly decided that they would draft the water more and more. And so this green light represents what they actually did as against what they planned to do. So you realize that they are drafting the dam, and if we don't take time, very soon the integrity of the dam will be at stake. Let's go on. The IPPs, they are owed $200 million. Ghana Gas's debt has reached $735 million today. ENI is owed $160 million 
Because of that, last two weeks, GMPC came to the Mines and Energy Committee asking that we should give them permission to borrow $250 million. We thought that they were going to do some capital investment. When we asked them, they told us that they are going to use it to pay for fuels. $250 million just to use it on consumption. That is the state of the energy sector today. Ladies and gentlemen, President Akufuado said something, and I just want to deal with this, and the rest I'm sure would have another time to check them through. He said he inherited $2.4 billion of debt from President Mahama. And like Pifi was saying, as president, you must be honest. You can't just think that you can deceive the people. Let's go to the next slide. This is what he said. He said that I am clearing Mohammed's 2.4 billion uh, energy debt. And he said it outside of Ghana. If he had said it, he at least would have managed him. But this one, he's gone outside of Ghana. But you see, the facts will always expose you. Let's go to the next slide. This is information presented to investors for the Esla PLC. Submitted by Ken Oforiata. He says that as at 31st August, the debt, the total debt, using an exchange rate of 4.4, if you convert it to dollars, it was 2.1 billion. So that's by what they inherited from us, including the debt they compounded and added it and increased it, it was 2.1 billion. So how can you increase a debt from a lower figure to 2.1 billion, turn around and tell Ghanaians that you inherited a debt of 2.4 billion? This can only be Choba economics or Choba analysis. I don't think that this is how you do things. Then let's go on. Recently, recently, let's go on, let's go. I will deal with this at another lecture. This is Ameu. This is Boachia Jaco. <laughs> Boachia Jaco tells us that he has reviewed PPAs, 11 of them. He saved 7.8 billion Ghana CD. Ameu takes over. He says that the same PPAs, he has also reviewed them. He saved 6.8 billion. So among these two, who can you believe, who do you trust, and who can you deal with? But you see, like I said, the truth and the fact would always expose you. When you look at the next slide, this is ECG. Their presentation to parliament. It was presented in March 2009. And as you see, that's ECG's March 2019. This is ECG's logo. We interrogated them as a committee. How many thermal plants have you signed in terms of PPA? These are the thermal plants. 14. How many thermal plants have you cancelled in terms of PPA? That's the figure. Zero. So the one who signed the contract says that having cancelled any contract, the minister sits in his office and he says that he has cancelled 11 contracts. And among the two, you don't even know who is telling the truth and who is lying. That is the problem we are facing. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I think that there's another issue going on, and all of us must watch out. There's a deliberate attempt by the Akufuado government to repaint, appropriate President Mame's achievements, commission them, and present them as if they are his achievements. This is the BXC Solar Project. The BAC solar project was completed in June 2016. Having failed to achieve anything in two years, President Akufuado writes to Central Region. He goes to commission the same project that you completed and claims that it is part of his one district, one, one, one factory. <laughs> if you can't achieve your own targets, must you go and take President Mahama's projects, appropriate them, and present them as yours? And this is happening in different sectors of the economy. So I think we must watch out and be very vigilant as far as some of these things are concerned. Now, I would leave the slides. I'm sure we'll have another time. There are quite a lot. Recently, they've talked about the ENI gas project and stated that it's stranded. And they sought to blame President Mahama for it. I just used 30 seconds to deal with that issue. President Mahama signed the ENI gas project. And now... President Mama sought to do is that he knew that the gas was coming. So he taxed us that the car power plant, the 450, it should not come to Tema. Originally, the 450 was supposed to go to Takrade. But because we're having energy challenges, he said, let's do a fast track one. 
bring the 225 to Tema and begin to evacuate power. So that is a, a stopgap measure. But then as for the 450, when it's ready in 2017, let it go to Takrade. By the time it is anchored, the ENI gas would have been ready so that uh, car power would have offtake it. And this is what we're doing. We even had a gas master plan. We did the feasibility study until they took over. They suspended the program and said that they were investigating us. It took them two years. They delayed the project. When the 450 finally came, they took it back to Tema. So you are sleeping on the job. You are snoring on the job. You fail to pursue President Mahmoud's programs. And today, when you are supposed to pay $32 million every month because of your inertia and incompetence, you turn around and blame President Mahama. In conclusion, we handed over a resilient, strong, vibrant, dedicated energy sector to Akufuado. What he has done is to turn President Mahama's programs upside down, mismanage the sector. And today, we are witnessing Dumso. We are witnessing Dumso, they claim for 12 days, and yet they will not publish the load shedding timetable. 12 days, you won't publish the load shedding timetable. But I am telling you that the sector is financially bankrupt. If we don't face the truth, and if they don't call some of us to support them, so that even in the interest of the nation, we put aside our party colors and give them some simple advice. One day, one day, they will run the energy sector to the ground and we will not have electricity again. President Mahama, I salute you. This is your track record. We are proud of you. You achieved a lot in the energy sector and no amount of vilification, no amount of bastardizing will take away your achievement as far as the energy sector is concerned. Thank you very I much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.